Have you seen the guys with the manly hair on the face this season on The, the Amazing, Amazing Race? Two best friends, Joel and Garrett, chasing down the million dollar carrot. Where will you go? How far will you go? If you want to know, watch the next episode. Two pals battling around, span the globe, representing their home in Idaho. Facial hair gods, two dad bods. Met in the army, served in the same squad. Every girl's whole pass will be Joel and Garrett from now on. Put your phone away, the video has begun. Hold on, I gotta make a comment. Welcome! Making, <laughs> I gotta make a comment making fun of you on Facebook. We can wait. How do you spell stalls? Like, you know, when you're driving a stick shift and you stall it? How do you spell stalls? Give me your phone. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to our recap of episode 8, <clears throat> the Slovenia leg, and let's get something right out of the way. Slovenia! Right out front. Did you know that Slovenia was established in the year 1199? I did know. I learned that during this episode. I taught people that. We should just spice in Slovenia facts as we go. <laughs> so let's hit on something right out of the gate. Our names. My name is Joel Strasser. What's your name? My name is Garrett Smith. And I call him Smythe. Smythe. And you call me? Strasser, of course. Why? Why do we do that? Well, that's a wonderful question. I'm glad you asked. <clears throat> Your last name is Strasser. <laughs> Your last name is Smythe, not Smythe. But when we were in the Army, there were three Smiths in our platoon. We went, Everybody just normally went by their last name. We couldn't call him Smith. Or the other yeah. two would be like, huh? So <laughs> he became Smythe, and he's been Smythe ever since. It's not that hard to figure out. Get it? So when we're flying from Frankfurt to Vienna, the teams were on different flights. We all thought we were going to be on the same yeah. flight, but everyone's trying to get standby. Gre yeah, and Greg and John got the flight. Yeah. No problem. <clears throat> no. <coughs> Pardon me, you folks. All right? you all yeah. Right? Okay. Proceed. So Greg and John, <laughs> Greg and John got the first flight. Todd and Ashley and Corey and Rob got on standby. A lot of other teams got on standby also. They were trying to get the same I, flight. I might be mistaken, but we might be the only ones that were not allowed to get on standby. Well, we tried, and they said, you the, may they, not. They said the list is way too long already. And they were not nice about it, by the way. And so, yeah, they said no to us. But all the other teams were trying to get on standby. <laughs> and then we walk up, and we see Steve and Anna Lee at a counter. They were stressed. Getting on standby. They, they were stressed, like, you know, hoping they can make this early flight. <laughs> so we walk up, and we're like, what flight are you guys on? <laughs> And Annalise's like, well, we're on the whatever late one we were on or something, but we're trying to get on standby for this one, and this lady's being difficult. And we're like, oh, you're not on you the one You didn't get on the earlier flight? Whatever time it was. If you recall, you know, that happened earlier in the season where we got the earlier flight. and It's like and good comedians do throwbacks yeah, to the earlier yeah, yeah, jokes. Yeah. So we we're, told her we're like, we were on oh. the earlier flight. Oh, you didn't get the you didn't get the earlier flight? Oh, oh Can shoot. I do my impression of Annalise? Yes, you yes, be yes. you and I'll be Annalise. What flight are you on? I, I don't I want the same one as you guys, but I'm trying to get on standby. Oh, oh, you're on the earlier flight too? Wait, what What? What flight are you on? Where, where are you on? You're not on the earlier one? <laughs> <laughs> I swear we got smoke and fire coming out of Annalie's ears, nose, and eyes, and mouth. Now, don't think that we're making fun of Annalie, because we're not. No, we, it was all in fun. We quickly <laughs> smoothed it over and said, no, we're joking, we're joking. We're we joking. only let her stew in that for about 10 seconds. She was about to go rip that lady's head off that said she couldn't get on standby because she thought that we'd made the earlier flight. We had a good relationship with Steve and Natalie at this point, and even though we had U-turned him, we were getting to be good friends. Oh, yeah. And she even said afterwards, she, she laughed about it. She's yeah. like, you know what? I needed that. <laughs> she Thank was, you. Yes. It kind of helped calm her her, uh -huh. her nerves and everything. So. Yeah. So we did end up on that second flight, but it didn't really matter that much because, as you saw, there was a whole fiasco with those earlier three teams yeah. trying, to, trying to beat the system, and they almost did. Uh, but we all ended up getting to Ljubljana at the same so time. So the funny thing about that is when we were on the train, Annalie had gone to the bathroom. She wasn't there. When we oh, saw yeah. all the other teams, the early teams, all of a sudden running back to get onto our train, mm -hmm. we couldn't believe it. They all got on our train. They walked up to another cabin because the seats were full. And then Annalie comes back from the bathroom, and we're like, 
Guess what? <laughs> That's right. All the other teams are on this train with us. And she's, and she's like, like Shut you up. guys, why do you keep messing with me? She didn't believe us. It was so actually really fun to was. get to tell her that we were now all on the same train. And finally, we're like, come, look, they're in the next car. <laughs> so that was pretty awesome. So we get to the we get to Ljubljana. We run from the train station to Congress Square. We get our clue that tells us, or we get our car, and we yeah. have to fly, or we have to drive, sorry, yeah, up to, to the Leshy Airfield, and we get to do the glider challenge, and we got there first! We got great directions, and we got quick directions, yeah. and we just, we got there pretty easily, we were, without we were there, any issues. By the way, we were there a good 10, 15 minutes before another team showed up. I know in the show it looks like Rob and Corey were like right on our yeah. heels, but... Smythe was already about to go up in the flight in the glider by the time they pulled up. And we want to give a shout out to McDonald's for the gigantic billboard yes, that I said re- Leashy McDonald's. Because yes. we were nervous. We, we were following sure. the directions, but we couldn't see any signs for this Leashy place. And then the McDonald's billboard said it was coming up in like 10 yes. kilometers or something. And we're like, thank you, McDonald's. We know we're going the right way now. Not a heart, an M. Yeah, McDonald's. that was good. That was good. Thank like you. Thank you should you. do that more often. I might do it every episode. Okay, let's do that. <laughs> so let's rewind. <laughs> we gotta go back to the first episode first. Yeah, we'll fit it in somehow. Uh, so there we are at the glider. Tell us about the glider. Yeah, challenge. so we got the we, the. Blah, 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 blah. Tell us about the glider challenge now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, we were the first ones to the glider. I run up there. Um, I have to put a parachute on. They, you know, they help me get it on and everything and. And then they take me up to the glider, put me inside of it, and then they give you a safety brief. And I mean brief. It was like <laughs> the shortest safety brief you'll ever see. I sit down, they buckle my, they buckled me in, you know, and then they say, okay, we're going to close the, the canopy. This is the latch that'll lock it in. If there's an issue while you're up there, you're going to flip these latches on each side, and then you push the canopy open, and then you take your seatbelt off, and then you jump out, and when you're clear of the aircraft, you pull this ripcord. I'm <laughs> like, oh, uh, okay. Uh, and I'm like, really? That's that's all I get? Like, I feel like there should be more to uh, this safety brief than this. Did you know? Oh, sorry. I felt yeah. like I interrupted you. No, no, no. Go ahead. Did you know what you were looking for? Because Phil tells the audience exactly what you're looking for. But did you know what you're looking for? I knew that there were boats somewhere in this lake that had numbers on top of them. That's all you knew. And that's all I knew. You it's, didn't know uh, you were looking for the year Slovenia became a I country? I had no clue what the question was going to be in the end. Because Phil tells the audience that's what yeah, you're looking for, but so obviously didn't tell me. you should have known that. I just had some binoculars <laughs> and shaky hands because we're in first, yeah. and I was sent up there. And you're way up in a glider. Yeah. That could cause some shakiness. And so once we get up there, I'm looking through these binoculars, and I felt like I was so high up in the air. I think they took me up too far, if I'm being honest, because... Somehow everyone else got this answer right the first try, but I did not. When I looked through the binoculars, I could barely make out some numbers. I wasn't sure if I was seeing sevens or eights. I wasn't sure if the nines were sixes. In the end, I kind of convinced myself there was two ones and two nines. And then what I did is I, you know, the there's a focus thing on the binoculars, right, to focus in. Once we were done and I was flying back to land, I immediately took the focus thing and spun it all the way to one side. <laughs> So whoever gets this point, I'm not, I'm not, fo- I had to focus those binoculars myself. That's awesome. I'm not going to leave them focused for the next that. guy. <laughs> so why in the world did you get the date wrong? Well, I knew there was two ones and two nines. And so when it said the year that Slovenia was established was, yeah, is that what it was? Yeah. And I'm going to go ahead and call people out right now because, oh, here's what I think happens. I think people are watching the show and they have no freaking clue what year Slovenia became a country. And then they see the answer on the screen, 1991. They're like, oh, yeah, there was like a Yugoslavia Cold War thing going on. Yeah, well, guess what? You're watching it on the show, and you're putting it together after you know the answer. I guarantee you none of you knew the answer, all you keyboard warriors. <laughs> so, <laughs> my- Here, here's, here was my strategy, okay? I get down, it asks me what year, and then I think, Slovenia, Castlevania, Dracula, 1199. <laughs> Right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure Todd had the same idea because he was talking about Dracula. Yeah, Ashley mentioned Dracula too. Yeah. Now, what I've found out since then is it's actually pronounced Slovenia. Slovenia. Had I been told that, I would have never thought Dracula, and I would have thought 1991, of course. Of course. Yeah. Well, the things you learn after the fact. Dracula. If you don't know what Castlevania is, then go back to the 80s and 90s. Okay. (laughs) Did you notice, dear viewer, that for an instant while he was up in the glider, I was wearing the fanny pack? 
I thought I never wore the fanny pack again after forgetting it way back it, in leg two, but it, apparently I yeah. did. When I saw you wearing that, I thought to myself, why did I even give that to him? I should have yeah. just kept it with me the yeah. whole time. You should have taken it up in the glider. So we get that. We're, we're now in fifth place because there were still two teams behind us. Yes. Lena and Morgan had to do it again. Steve and Annalie didn't even show up till you were up in the plane the second time. So um, we get to Planica Nordic Center. Mm -hmm. We go in and do the cross-country skiing. Um, just so you know, we did do it. They decided not to show yeah, us do it. They the saw show. me fall down, and that was about the end of that. How long did that take us? Like 15 minutes? Yeah, it wasn't too bad. Going up the hill is a little harder. We kind of just had to walk up the hill. But oh, I found out I'm a natural at cross-country skiing. He was doing it. In fact, at the end, he was like, that was so awesome. We never fell down once. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, yeah, we never fell down once. <laughs> I, I, think, I think I fell down twice, to be honest with you, but they only showed We got it down after a, a not too long. Yeah, the learning curve, yeah. We picked that we, up. We, we ended were up just whizzing around, along yeah. in those cross-country skis. Skis, I wish you could have seen it. So we took the clue, and we had to decide um, whether we were going to do the hay challenge or the yes. beekeeping challenge. My initial thought was hay because I've done a lot of hay work as a youth growing up on a farm, moving bales of hay around. But um, And I was picturing bales when I read the clue. I wasn't picturing loose hay, and I definitely wasn't picturing those racks. It but. is funny, too, because Greg and John you know, talk about how they're city boys and, and they're messing with all this hay. And us, we're, we're not, I mean... We're not country boys by any means, but at the same time, he grew up, you know, baling hay and all that. Yeah. And yet we went with the, the bees. I love bees. I, I would love to have honeybees myself. And so when I saw that building a bee house, I thought, you know what? That would be fun to do. And I was hoping that we'd actually get to interact with the bees. Yep. We didn't. They Now, there was right next to the field that we were in. There were more bee houses that were already built. A real active bee. Yeah. Farm. And there was a ton of bees all over yeah. it. But. So we get there, and it was fun. It we, was we, fun. We, at first, we thought we were going to build that bee house with a hammer and Yeah, nails. we weren't sure. We're looking for the tools, and we realized the pieces all just, like, fit together. Mm -hmm. And that's when we were watching the show, and my wife leans over and says, good thing you guys did the Ikea practice before you watched this. And as soon yeah. as she said that, one that's, of us on yeah, the screen said, this said, is like an Ikea, an Ikea bee house. Because <laughs> we did practice. We bought some Ikea things and threw away the instructions, and we put them and together. figured it out. Um, months ba before. Based on looking at an up. example. Yeah. We just looked at an example, and then, yeah. oh, in fact, there's the example. Yeah, it was one of these shelves. Yeah. So it was leading up to the race. That was one of the many yeah. things we did to practice. But the beekeeping challenge was fun. It was fun. I had a lot of fun with that. We enjoyed it. I brought home a souvenir. There's oh, yellow yeah. paint on my shoelace right there. That's uh, it's out of focus, but I'm sure you got the picture. That was uh, real Slovenian yellow paint. Yes, authentic even. I think they make it out of clay. I think it's latex paint myself, but I don't know. I don't, I'm no expert on paint, just bees. So the reason the I've heard people asking about all the colors and if there's any anything to it. Actually, there is, because they said the bees are actually attracted to bright colors, mm -hmm. and so they paint the bee houses bright colors like that in order to attract the bees back to the house. But why the paintings? Now, the paintings were also a thing. Yes, that was a setup. Go ahead. Um, I don't remember. <laughs> oh, okay. I remember them being a thing. I don't the remember. Paintings, the bees remember the paintings, too. So when they have different placards with those paintings that we hung on the painted boxes... It helps the bees go back to the same box they came from. And they always return and leave from the same box. They look for those paintings. It's really awesome. And I don't believe we knew that, that Slo Slovenia was the bee capital of the world um, when we were doing this challenge. But after this leg was over and we had a chance to relax a little bit and get rested up. At the hotel. We actually um, turned on the TV and there was a documentary about beekeeping. In Slovenia. In Slovenia. And we learned a bunch and we're we, just like, we just built these and houses. And we saw, yeah, these exact houses we built. We saw them painted with the pictures and everything. And that's where we learned all this stuff. They we learned explained tons it of cool stuff. Yeah, it was, like it was really the cool. night after we did this, yeah. which was crazy. All right. So we leave there and we get down the road a little bit. Um, we get approximately four kilometers down the road because I've measured it. <laughs> and we realized that this notebook was um, not in our possession. I the handy-dandy notebook. Yeah. So why do we have a notebook? Every team, I think, keeps notes. Any team that has watched the race, that yes. knows the race. They keep notes in a notebook because if you make it to the final leg, there's definitely going to be a memory challenge. They do it every time, so you better be prepared with notes. And i have been keeping meticulous notes the whole time. I didn't want to lose this. We had a quick discussion in the car about, is this worth going back yeah. for? And we decided, yes, it is. 
It's the whole risk versus the reward thing. Mm -hmm. and, and in that moment, the whole thought is, if we make it to the final leg, we would want the notebook. If we go back and get the notebook and get eliminated this leg because of it, it wasn't worth it. We kind of knew where Steve and Annalie were, though, but we had no idea about the hay people. We didn't right. know that the hay challenge was taking people longer than the bee house challenge was taking us. So we, yeah, we all we could go off of was Steve and Annalie, yeah. and we thought you know potentially we're second to last, they're last. Yep, that's what we thought. But we, we knew where they were at as far as building it goes, so we kind of thought we yes. had time. So we we decided to go back. It took us no more than ten minutes to get back, get the notebook, and get back to where we turned around. We drive down to Ubiana. We go to the Nematoctic skyscraper. You pronounce the city much better than the skyscraper. <laughs> Thank you. I think so. <laughs> so uh, that spiral staircase was really awesome. It was cool. Um, it didn't show it, but we did ascend the staircase. <laughs> uh, we really did. And then after we got the clue, I've seen some more keyboard warriors out there talking about, was it okay to go down the elevator? Did, did, if a team went down the elevator, they cheated. At least one team went down the elevator, and at least every team talked about yes you heard greg and john talk about it we also talked yes. about it we stopped there for a minute and we even said to each other is this considered on foot yeah well here's the deal we overthought it we yes. should have gone down the elevator we only saw one team go down the elevator in the episode and they were the smartest team we don't know if anybody else did but by far that was a smart move by mm -hmm. steve and Annalie. yes uh we, so sometimes in the game overthinking things and reading into it will punish yes. you. yes sometimes underthinking things will punish you um, but uh, yeah, there was no, there was nothing in the clue that said you had to take the elevator back. And they down. were indeed on foot. Yes. As they went down the elevator. Yeah. So, anyways, we get down, we run to the dragon bridge. There's a Sherpa there with Phil. Uh, what was the Sherpa holding in his hot little he, hand? He had a big old. Is that what was it? A ram horn? I think it was a ram horn. Big horn with a trumpet mouthpiece at the end of it. Yeah. And I, being somebody that knows what a trumpet is, mm, mm. because I've played it my whole life, Yes, I saw that thing and I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. I, I play the trumpet. And Phil was like, well, give it a shot. And <laughs> they handed me this big old horn and... You put his mouth right on it. Yeah, oh, yeah. No worries, guys. No worries. <laughs> well, I don't think at least. Yeah. But I just blasted into that thing. It was loud, too. And like, people around were like, what is that? <laughs> and you know what's funny is... In my trumpeting experience, if you're ever going to try to play something loud, you always point the instrument away from people's ears. And so I <laughs> turn towards the river off to the side, right? right? I forgot. And I get ready to blast. <laughs> Not thinking about the fact that this horn is cur curved right towards <laughs> Phil and the Sherpa. Yeah. And I just blasted in that thing, and, and Phil was like, that sounded like an elephant. <laughs> yeah. They should have put that in the episode. I don't know why they didn't. But anyways, this was a fun leg. Yes. I freaking love Slovenia. I didn't know I loved oh, it until now, and now I just keep dreaming about going back. That's the place I want to take my wife back to, yes. for sure. Oh, yeah. And oh, did you know... When you are when we were at that bee house, when yes. we were building the bee houses, we were less than five miles from the point where Italy, Austria, and Slovenia come together. Really? We were right there. In fact, the road that took us to the where we turned off to go to the bee uh -huh. house, if we'd gone less than a mile further, we would have been in Italy. Maybe we should have done it. Yeah, it would have been worth it, huh? Yeah. To get lost in Italy. Instead of reading the notebook next time. I was looking that. so really close to where the bee house is. There's a little monument on a hill where there's three points of the three countries. How awesome would it have been if our next, after the oh, thing, would have been cool. we had to go meet Phil at the map yeah, there. Yeah, that would have been awesome. Or something like that. But anyways, um, pretty cool that we're so close to three countries at once. Yeah. Um, all right, so it's time, Smythe. We need to give a shout out to the team that got eliminated this round. Okay. Lena and Morgan. It's time. This We actually love and hate this segment mm. because every time we do this, we have to talk about a team whose dream came to an end. Yeah. Today, it's Lena and Morgan. Lena and Morgan, I mean, okay, I want to tell you a story. And this goes way back to Los Angeles before the race even started. We had a day in the park where we were doing like a press junket. And we weren't allowed to talk to other teams, but we were observing them. And Lena and Morgan, I observed them fighting with each other in the park. And I thought, oh, yeah, I am so <laughs> glad they are here because they are going to be an easy opponent. Look at them fighting. Turns out uh, the fighting was something that actually worked for them. They were such good siblings. They could fight. Oh, they could get along. <laughs> they could work together. They could do all the things. And that didn't hurt them at all. Yeah. They, they were a real deal team, as we now know. When we were in that park in L.A., yeah. I remember... Um, Lena and Morgan were kind of just walking around in circles, kind of 
But Lena was constantly looking for four leaf clovers. I remember that. And I remember Morgan like. Um, I don't know. Mor Morgan was almost like, come on, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, Morgan seemed annoyed with her when she was looking for the four-leaf clover. But they would start walk walking, and then all of a sudden it would be like, Lena would go, squirrel! And then walk over and pick <laughs> another four-leaf clover. I don't uh, know if she ever found one. I'd be I don't know if know she did either. If she found but, one. But I just love their relationship. They, the way that they, they can go back and forth at each other, but at the same time, they're just... Totally cool with each other. Yeah. Like, like they just get over it and then yeah. move on. They they and tell each other what what they think and then they get over it and then they move on. And then um, the other thing about them that people may not know, and maybe I don't know either. Maybe I'm wrong on this, but I swear, didn't they say that neither one of them drove stick shift before getting ready for the show? I think they learned to drive stick shift specifically for the Amazing Race. Yeah, they took lessons or something. Yeah, and. Uh, I don't know if you were impressed, but I was impressed. Yeah, they did for somebody that just learned how to drive stick shift. They seemed like they didn't have any issues, mm -hmm. especially as many as somebody that's driven stick shift for a long time. I don't know what you're talking about, because uh, shut up. It was in the preview of the next episode, <laughs> in case anybody's wondering. If anybody's saying, "Wait, I don't remember him ever having any issues." All right, moving I on. I saw a preview for I, the next episode. I hate this topic. I hate this topic. So we'll just move on. But I, you know what I don't hate? Lena and Morgan. I freaking love I you, love Lena, Lena and Morgan. Morgan. Here's to you. So, that's our episode 8 recap. Stay tuned for episode 9 recap coming up soon. We'll see you all then, and until then, buy our merch! <laughs> uh, sorry, guys. I'm sorry. Look what I'm repping, though. Huh? Huh? After you bought some of ours, get you some of that. <laughs>